Sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. It's the G to the U to the R to the U. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. It's the G to the U to the R to the U. It is Monday, December 28th, 2020, and you are listening to Monday Morning Football with the Guru. And we have a nice and outstanding show for y'all today, man. And as always, man, I appreciate y'all. Hey, I hope everyone had a great Christmas break, man. The Guru did. And from the Guru and the family to you guys and your family, I hope you all had a safe and enjoyable freaking Christmas, man. So now, with that said, let's talk about football, baby. So now, I want to get right to it, man. I want to get right to it. I'm not even wasting no time because the goo, I'm hype about today's show because it's going to be a loaded show, right? So let's talk about the Buccaneers and the, uh, and the Detroit Lions, right? Let's talk about that game. That was a Saturday game, man. So uh, one aspect I want to talk about is it's it's. Matthew Stafford, because it's just, there's something, there's something happening. There's something brewing in the football world right now, man, about Matthew Stafford. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I feel like the, the, the football world and the football universe feel bad about Matthew Stafford. But me, as a guru, I have no feel bad for Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford is a losing quarterback. Matthew Stafford is one of those guys that fool you. He got everything you need to be a great quarterback in this league. But no, he's a losing quarterback, and his number said so, man. So as a guru, you know, this is what I do. I have to go back. I'm like, who is Matthew Stafford to me, man? Because Matthew Stafford is a good guy. It's hard to really to really say negative things about Matthew Stafford, but at the end of the day, I'm the truth guy for you guys. I'm here. They call me the guru because I feed you guys the truth, man. And the truth about Matthew Stafford is this guy is, he's a nice guy. He's Jeff George. I got to give you a, y'all kids might not know who Jeff George is, man. But Matthew Stafford is Jeff George. He's just a nicer version, a nice personality of Jeff George. Those guys got this strong arm. They got the, they could throw the ball a, a, a hundred miles. They could throw the ball a uh, hundred yards. I mean, they could do everything you want with a football. When the football is in their hand. But for some strange reason, man, those guys don't equivalent to winning, bro. And I think Matthew Stafford, bro, is just weird. Like, there's this rhetoric, and, and it's just pissing me off, man, because there's two rhetoric. Like, you hear about Matthew Stafford, and you hear about my man Money Mitch, right? There's this rhetoric like Matthew Stafford to me is a pretty, pretty loser. While my man, uh, Mitch Trubisky, is an ugly winner. And this rhetoric is trying to piss me off. And I got to put say something about it. And I got to lead this show with that, man. Because they told my Matthew Stafford is going to be a free agent or whatever. Like they could trade for Matthew, whatever the situation. Because we know this, the Lions could opt out of Matthew Stafford's contract this year at the end of this season. So that would give Matthew Stafford his chance to be a free agent and go somewhere else. And, and people are saying, oh, he could go to New England. Oh, he could go here. He could go here. Like Matthew Stafford is a savior. No, Matthew Stafford is not a savior, dog. Matthew Stafford is, is a total um, winning. He's what? 74 and 89 and 1 total record, bro. He's 74, 89 and 1. That's a losing record. And most crazy crazily Matthew Stafford at one point was 9 and 54 against team with a winning record bro at one stage dog he was 9 and 54 against team with a winning record bro it's like what is this infatuation with Matthew Stafford man what is this infatuation why is everybody think Matthew Matthew Stafford is just so no Matthew Stafford is a pretty, pretty loser, man. Is it, guys, every time, is it because, it's like, I give it to him. This man always, it's like, he always have the prettiest situation. You watch Detroit. You see Matthew Stafford coming down. He plays with a busted shoulder. 
This man plays with a with a bad knee. He plays injured. Oh, yeah, we feel bad for him. Every quarterback play with injury, man. But for some reason, it's more dramatic with Matthew Stafford, bro. It's like Matthew Stafford is the most dramatic injury guy like I, 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 in football, man. It seemed like every time, oh, I just, I can't explain this dude like Matthew Stafford is just something about, he's a pretty, pretty loser, man. That the record shows that. And my man, Mitch Trubisky, is a freaking ugly winner, man. The only thing my man, Mitch Trubisky, does is win. And look at the rhetoric with Mitch and, and, and Matthew. Mitch Trubisky right now, man. Mitch Trubisky is a winner. He's, what, 28 and 20 as a, as a quarterback, starting quarterback, dog. Like, Mr. Trubisky wins ugly game. It's not beautiful. He don't throw a beautiful spiral. No, he don't. Mr. Trubisky don't, don't have dramatic injuries and, and, and just, 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 just do crazy stuff. No, he don't. He, don't have, he never had no Calvin Johnson and just throw the ball up. No, he don't, bro. Mr. Trubisky just win ball games, dog. Still, he does. You know what I'm saying? And they don't even want Mr. B. It's so bad. They don't even want Mr. Trubisky to even be on the team. Like, they don't even want him to start, man. That's how bad he is. That's how bad. That's the whole situation about Mr. Trubisky, the whole rhetoric. But Matthew Stafford, who loses average about 10 games a season, you know what I'm saying? But nobody ever talk about, oh, Matthew Stafford got to lose his job. Nah, because there's always some excuse because he's a pretty loser. Everything in life, if you're pretty, you get the benefit of the doubt. Even if you're a loser, dog. Even a pretty loser get benefit of the doubt over an ugly winner, man. I'm telling you, there's something about life, man. There's something about life about being pretty and being ugly, man. It's just funny about life, dog. Even in a scenario, even in a scenario, when you win, the freaking... Uh, um, Chicago Bears, they got Nick Foles. They're bringing guys in to 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 replace um, Money Mitch. They're bringing guys in to replace Money Mitch, and Money Mitch, the only thing he's doing is winning, dog. But Matthew Stafford, they're bringing other coaches instead of replacing Matthew Stafford. They're replacing coaches, bro. The constant stay in Detroit is Matthew Stafford, man. It's Matthew, you know how many coaches you got to go through, man? How many coaches y'all got to go through? So, no, this guy's Jeff George. Matthew Stafford is Jeff George, kids. He's Jay Cutler, man. The only difference is he's a good guy. He's a nice guy. He's, he, his game is pretty. He even got a pretty mom, dog, no bull. My man, Matthew Stafford got a milf, man. Everything about Matthew Stafford is pretty, pretty. Throw the ball pretty. Even when he loses, it's pretty. It's always dramatic. When the Lions, Lions it's like a, it's a dramatic loss. But yet, when my man Money Mitch, you know what I'm saying? When the Bears are in trouble, they bench my man Money Mitch. And then the Bears got in trouble because we know what Nick Foles is. We know what he is. And then Money Mitch came back. And look, what the, look at the Bears now, man. They're on the streak, dog. My man streaking down the street. My the Bears is streaking down the, the, the street like they got no clothes on, baby. I'm talking about like they got this no clothes on, butt ass naked in the winter time. They streaking butt ass naked, dog. Because of my man, Mr. Trubisky, Money Mitch, butt ass naked leading the street. Streaking down, Mr. Trubisky. That's the difference because it's an ugly, ugly street, dog. But guess what? Matthew Stafford, who everybody loves. Once again, look at the Detroit Lions. In the first quarter, Matthew Stafford got hurt with some scenario. And then they got blown out. And they were like, oh, another pretty loss by the Detroit Lions and Matthew Stafford. I've seen this game before, dog. Once you're pretty, you always get benefit of the doubt, man. That's just life. That's just life, man. Man, y'all, I told you, it's going to be a rocket show, man. We getting started crazy already, baby. We getting started crazy already, Matthew Stafford. Hey, that might be the last time we ever leave with a Matthew Stafford uh, in the show. That might be, that's the first time it might be the last time. But I just had to say something. You know what I'm saying? You know you had a gap in between, uh, you know, Christmas is over, right? So you really have a week to be naughty because Santa Claus don't count this uh, for, the, for, for, for next year, 2021. So you have a week to be naughty, you guys. 
So this week, I'm finna be naughty. I'm just gonna tell you what it is and how it is. Because guess what? When it first hits, you gotta be nice for the year again so you get all that present, kids. Telling y'all, man, that's how the goo used to do it all the time. <laughs> oh, man. So real quick, we gotta move on to the next one, man. To the Dolphins and the, and the Raiders, man. The Dolphins and the Raiders. Man, and I wanna talk about a rock star. I want to talk about a rock star, man. Dolphins head coach, Brian Flores. And y'all got, you know what, well, you know me. You know what I'm saying? My second job on my side gig, you know what I'm saying? I'll be giving out roses for the bachelorette, man. That's what I do. And I'm giving out roses, dog. And I got to give Brian Flores, man. Right now, Brian Flores is the coach of the year, man. Brian Flores is probably one of the, Brian Flores right now is the best coach in football. Like you guys can say whatever y'all want to say, however you want to say it, dog. Brian Flores is the best coach in football right now, dog. If y'all must have forgot what this guy is doing in Miami, this is the same Miami team a year ago. A year ago, we were thinking they might go zero and for what zero and whatever, dog. Like, the Miami team was this year. Last year, Miami team was this year's New York Jets, dog. Like y'all are forgetting. It's like, do y'all see what the New York Jets are doing this year? Like, how they sucked, and we're like, oh, my God, blah, blah, blah. So imagine if the Jets get a new coach, and they get in the playoff in, in, in next year, dog. That's, that's what's happening. The Miami Dolphins, bro, finna make the playoff. And my man Brian Flores is a rock star, and he's a superstar, dog. And he has this motto in Miami that I love, dog. The motto goes, no ego, we go. I love that. Let me repeat that, man. No ego, we go. And I'm telling you, the Miami Dolphins are the most selfless team in all of football, bro. I'm talking about there is no ego in that locker room, and you can see them go, baby. My man Brian Flores is building a program. And I love it, man. Because once you guys, what you got to realize, yo, Brian Flores come from the Bill Belichick pedigree. From the Bill Belichick tree. But one thing you got to realize about Brian Forrest, though, he was with Belichick the whole time when, to when they were building um, the Dolphins, I mean the Patriots. My man Brian Flores, remember, because New England wasn't know what New England was. He was there when New England was just an average program, an average NFL team. They weren't winning championships like this. They weren't getting rings, dog. You know what I'm saying? They weren't like Hollywood wives, man. They weren't like Hollywood actresses. They weren't getting rings on their hand every every freaking two, three years, man. You know what I'm saying? They weren't getting no rings in their fingers like a Hollywood wife, man. Nah, man. Nah. At one point, that wasn't happening. They had to build a program, man. And my man Brian Flores, you know what? He was part of that process, man. My man Brian Flores lived the process. He helped. He was down there, man, with his hands, man, getting down and dirty, building the New England Patriots to what they became. Brian Flores was down there. He didn't read no book about building a franchise. He didn't read no book about that. He lived it, man. He ain't got to tell no stories about that. My man lived it. He was right next to Bill Belichick in building one of the best dynasties in all of sports. Not just NFL, but in all of sports. And that knowledge, bro, that's what my man Brian Flores is bringing to Miami, dog. And my man Brian Flores is the rock star, man. And you see that. You don't need, you don't, I don't need three, five years to know. You don't need that. You don't need that, man, because in Miami, there is no ego. They go, bro. There is no ego. Look at that team, dog. Look at the situation with, with the quarterback. The biggest, the biggest identification of there's no ego on this team, bro. With the Fitzmagic and the Tua situation. Them boys are using a two-quarterback system, bro. They're using a two-quarterback system at the, I mean, and they're using it to the best, bro. Like, Coach Flores, unbelievable, unbelievable, and he's a rock star, man. He's a rock star. You have the old Fitzpatrick at one point was upset because he got replaced as the starter, but you know what? He kept the locker room in play. He kept the locker room in play, and then in situation where he knows he's too big for a tour, 
He's doing it because he kept the locker room in play and he kept um, Fitzpatrick in the game. Then he knows how to utilize Fitzpatrick in situation where Tua is limited and has not lack of experience. And that is called situational football. Where do you think he learned that from, man? We have a rock star, man, and his name is Brian Flores, man, and he's building a program. The Miami Dolphins are going to be a program to be reckoned with, man. They're going to be a program to be reckoned with. And with that motto, no ego, we go, I expect the Miami Dolphins to go real far. Not only this year, but in the years to come, man, because they're building a program. Woo! My goodness, man. My goodness. I like, I like Flores. I like what they're doing over there, man. I love what they're doing over there. It's not what I like. I love what they're doing over there. I want to talk about the Colts and the, uh, and the Pittsburgh Steelers ball game. So we know it was a hell of a comeback. I mean, it was a hell of was it, a 24-7 ball game, whatever the situation was, man. You know what I'm saying? It was a hell of a comeback. The, the Pittsburgh Steelers basically just, they're Frank Wright. You know what I'm saying? Frank Wright. If y'all don't know what that means, <laughs> this still is Frank Wright, Frank Wright. Because the Colts head coach, Frank Wright, made one of the, the best comeback in NFL history when he was the quarterback for the Buffalo Bills. You know what I mean? So now, as the head coach for the Indianapolis Colts, they were up 24-7, I believe, of some sort. And, and obviously, the Pittsburgh Steelers came back and, and won the game. But needless to say, I don't even, I don't even want to speak about that because that's not my intention when I was watching that game. When I was watching the game, you know what I thought about, man? I was like, oh, my goodness, bro. This is the best destination spot for any quarterback in trouble in the league, bro. I'm talking about, you know, hey, you know, as a family, when you like, you want to go on vacation and you think about destination spots and you think about exotic spots, like some people think about Dubai. You know what I'm saying? Something about um, Eastern Europe or something. You know what I'm saying? The Mediterraneans. You know what I'm saying? You could even think about domestically, uh, Vegas, whatever, somewhere, somewhere exotic, right? You know what I'm saying? Because you pick those places because they got immunities. They got certain perks. They got certain things. You're like, man. And when I look at the Indianapolis Colts, and I look at the Pittsburgh Steelers, man, first of all, they got two old quarterbacks. We know they're done. We know those guys are done, man. So they're, they're moving on because their, their days are behind them. So as a future for guys, for troubled quarterbacks like the Carson Wentz's out there, for guys who's, who trouble the Sam Donalds out there of the world, for a quarterback who, who are in a situation that's not really where they want to be or not stable, you the Indianapolis Colts and the Pittsburgh Steelers, bro. I'm talking about now that's a five-star destination spot. They got everything you need. You need a a, 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 a well-run organization. They're both a well-run. You know what I'm saying? Chris Ballard, Kevin Colbert, tough flight GMs. Tough flight GMs. You talking about head coaches who are well-prepared. Oh, you got that. You got that, head coach. Mike Tomlin and Frank Wright. You got that. Head coaches with Super Bowl experience. You got that. You know what I mean? And then you talk about great defense. If you got that, the Indianapolis Colts got a very, very good defense. And obviously, we know about Pittsburgh and the defense. They got that, man. You know what I mean? The Colts, what the Colts, you talking about an offensive line to protect you. Oh, we know they got that. The Colts and the Steelers. You talking about a quarterback destination spots, man? You talking about everything that's already made for you, man? Like five-star meal. You have a, your own chef, private chef. You have a golf course in your backyard. Everything you want. The Colts and the Pittsburgh Steelers have that if you're a quarterback, man. Hell, the Steelers, if you're a quarterback, the Steelers are the best wide receiving drafting organization in football. You know you're always going to have a wide receiver in your possession. You know that when, you're, when you go to Pittsburgh. You know that. And in Indy, Naptown, come on, bro. They're going to protect you, dog. Naptown don't play, man. Naptown protects you better than damn Trojan condoms, dog. I'm telling you, Naptown offensive line will protect you and hold you down, baby. Hold you down. Man. Talking about a destination spot. Woo! For a quarterback now. If you want to win that ball game. If you want to win that bowl.
That's super bold. So real quick, we want to shift to the Falcons and the Chiefs. All right. So right before we got to, right before we get to that, real quick, right before we get to that, I just want to tell you one thing, real quick, man. When I talk about the Falcons and the Chiefs, just want to tell you one thing. You know when you get so bored. You know, now I'm talking about the Falcons and the Chiefs. You get so bored sometimes. You get tired. Like, you're so bored. You just you just get tired. Like, have you ever been that bored that you, you're so lazy that you just fall asleep? That's what's happening in Kansas City, man. Like, the Chiefs knew that they don't care about the regular season, bro. Covert or no covert. We all knew coming into this season, the Chiefs, like, they, they just got to get through the regular season. Uh, you hear this media, everybody talking about, oh, they're not hitting the, the spread. They're not blowing our teams. They're not. Dude, the Kansas City Chiefs guys are bored, man. They're bored. You see what they're doing today, man. They're doing some trick plays. Like, they try. I don't even know what that play was. With, they, they're spinning around in circle, and they're throwing the ball to Mahomes. The team is bored, dog. It's just like when you're at home, man. We all, we all, we all have experienced this in life. We all have experienced this. You know what I'm saying? We're chilling at home. You know, you got nothing to do. You're so bored. You're calling everybody. You're going through your phone. You know what I'm saying? If you're a single guy or something, you're probably going through a day nap. You know what I'm saying? Swiping left, swiping right. Because you're bored and shit. If you're a young lady, you're watching uh, one of them shows on uh, uh, Producer. What is those show called, man? Uh, the Bachelorette and some of the things she just said. You know what I'm saying? You're watching something. And then guess what? You all of a sudden, you're like, oh, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. That's what's happening with the Kansas City Chiefs, right? Because they don't care about the regular season, man. It's like they just finished, you know what I'm saying, swiping to the left, swiping to the right, watching The Bachelorette and, and whatever other shows is out there, man. You know what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, oh. it's time to fall asleep. Because let's just be real. When the Falcons was up 14-10, did you guys did you uh, did you guys really think they're gonna win this game? Did you really, really, really think the Falcons gonna win this game? Let's just be real. Would you have bet the house on it? No, but you'd have bet the house on the Chiefs. Cause you know what? You've seen this before, man. You've seen this before, dog. You know what this was? So you're like, ah, so you know what the, the Chiefs did? It's like when you're tired, you're like, ah, you wake up. You're like, let me go for a piss break real quick. Piss, you go piss, and you come back and fall asleep, man. That's what they basically did with the Atlanta Falcons, man. You know what I mean? They Falcons shot a beat, and they woke up like, oh, nah, man, I ain't going to piss on myself. Nah, man, you think y'all are slick. I ain't that tired. I know I'm tired and I'm bored, but I ain't that tired to be pissing on myself, man. So they woke up, you know what I'm saying, took a piss break and came back and went to bed, man. That's all, man. Don't take the, the, the cheese. Uh, don't worry about the cheese, y'all. When the playoff starts, that's when you're going to really see the Kansas City Chiefs, man. And we're going to take a quick break, right? You know we got to take a quick break. So when we come back after the break, man, we're going to talk about, uh, I want to talk about um, Baker Mayfield, man. You know what I'm saying? The, I, I want to say why there's – he got to talk about – he got to call out progressive because for some reason there was no insurance for gang green in New York, man. There was no insurance for gang green in New York for Baker Mayfield. And this is Monday Morning Football with the Guru. You are listening to Monday Morning Football with the Guru. For more sports content, visit – YouTube.com slash World of Sports Network. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, it's the G to the U to the R to the U. Appreciate y'all as always, man. You know, y'all y'all on the podcast. Show y'all, show the love on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever y'all listen to podcasts, man. You know what I'm saying? We all appreciate that love. Uh, y'all make sure y'all give us a comment and a rating, man, because, you know, that what help us out, man, boost us up. And as y'all on the video, YouTube, y'all keep subscribing and keep leaving that comment, man. Let me know how y'all feel. Once again, man, I hope y'all had a very good Christmas. I know one. I know who's had a hell of a Christmas right now. 
The New York Football Jets, man. What is going? The New York Football Jets now. They, they, that's two games in a row, man. Y'all remember at one point we're like, man, this might be the worst team in football. Adam Gates, this fired this guy. My goodness, how have things changed since uh, December, man? The New York Football Jets are the hardest team in all of football, man. Like, <laughs> like what are y'all talking about, man? So you know what? With that said. I got to talk to Joe Douglas, man. You know what I'm saying? This is the guru to my man, Joe Douglas, man. You know, I love Mighty Joe, the Jet DM. Mighty Joe. Mighty Joe. And this is about my man, Sam Donald, man. You know, this is my plea to Joe for Sam. Joe, Joe, Joe. Joe. So, we see what's happening right now. You, we, obviously, you guys are not getting Trevor Lawrence. We're not, you're not getting Trevor Lawrence. So, now you got to make a decision, Joe. And right now, I'm pleading that you keep my man Sam Donald. Because I think what's happening right now is going to be a beneficial in the long term for your organization. You know what I'm saying? What all this adversity, what less adversity that's happening right now in Sam Donald's early career that he's going through is adversity tolerance. That's what he's building. He's developing adversity tolerance, man. Anything that could go wrong in his first two years in the league or three years has gone wrong. Anything you could think of, but one thing we could say about this kid, man, he could have mono. My man, Sammy the Ghost, man, I love me some Sammy the Ghost. My man could see Ghost. My man could do everything. I mean, he could have sore throat. My man just, there's reasons why he plays, he don't play. Like, I don't even know what it is, man, but he always have reasons. But one thing I could tell you, dude, one thing I could tell you, my man is a constant professional, man. My man Sam Donald just haven't had the right environment to showcase his talent and ability, bro. Joe Douglas, with this situation you're in right now, get some more players around Sam Donald. Build around this. Build a fortress around Sam Donald, man. Because this kid is not the problem. He is not the problem. And he could be part of your solution. Just think about it, man. Think about this. This guy right now has gone through it. And it's like, as your organization. He's going through it with your fan base. How great it will be for you guys to bring a new, uh, basically a new staff in there. And get more talent, Joe Douglas. Put your stamp in the, uh, the type of system you want to run. We know you come from the Baltimore Ravens type of um, system. We know you want big, strong offensive line. We know you want a running game. We know that's why you, you what you want to develop, a hard-nosed defensive line. That's what you want to develop. That's your pedigree. That's your DNA. Sam Donald could be a very, very uh, uh, asset to the future. You develop the O-line. You keep giving them more weapons offensively. You give them a running back. I'm telling you, man, what you're seeing right now. You can see last year, Sam Donald. Look, Sam Donald is not the problem. You just put assets around him, Joe Douglas. And I promise you, man, Sam Donald will showcase. Sam Donald is a better quarterback than Jared Goff, man. Sam Donald is a better quarterback than Drew Law. Sam Donald is a better quarterback than a lot of quarterbacks in this league. Don't make that mistake, dog, because if you let Sam Donald go and this boy stay, goes to, um, go to Indianapolis, you regret that. That could be a problem. If this boy go to freaking San Francisco, that could be a problem, man. Come on, Big Joe. Come on, Big Joe. The grass is not always greener, Big Joe. The grass is not always greener, Big Joe. Once you go through adversity, you know what I'm saying? Adversity. And then you come out of that adversity. It makes you stronger, man. It makes you a better person. This is going to make the, the Jets organization. I can see the sideline now. Those guys are like, they're excited. When they win games, it's exciting. It's a different atmosphere in that sideline. Don't mess it up, man. Sam Donald got those guys going, man. If I was you, Joe, I'd keep my man Sammy the Ghost, man. I keep my man, I build around Sammy the Ghost, Joe Douglas. And that's a plea from the guru 
So it's Joe Douglas with regards to my man, Sammy the Ghost, a.k.a. Sam Donald. So I'm going to talk about a team in a, uh, that, that has a, a dilemma, man. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the 49ers and the Rams. The 49ers and the Rams in the future, they really, really, really got a dilemma. Because right now, when I look at these two organizations, as far as the, the hierarchy of the AFC West from this year and moving forward, man, oh, man, oh, man. It's not looking good. Because Jared Goff and Jimmy G, the two J and G, right? J and G guys. Those two guys, man, are the weakest link for those two organizations. And those two guys are the two worst quarterback in that, in, in that division. And those two guys are going to be the demise of those organizations if something is not done, bro. I'm telling you, the 49ers and the Rams have a dilemma, dog. And from what it looks like, it looks like whoever, whoever is smart enough or quick enough to decide and move on from the quarterback is going to be the team that's going to be projected or traject and change the trajectory of the organization. Because right now, the way things are going, Jimmy G and Jared Goff, they ain't it, man. They ain't it, man. You're looking at the trajectory of the Rams and the 49ers? Nah, bro. You can say what you want to say. Jimmy G ain't it. You can say what you want to say. My man, Jared Goff ain't it, man. They are the weakest link, man. The weakest link is Jimmy G and Jared Goff. I'm telling you when I keep saying they are the weakest link. It's unbelievable. It's like this show on TV. Y'all remember this show? Yes, y'all might forgot because I know y'all millennials always forget about the old days. Even if I remind you in the beginning, I know you're going to forget. That's what she do. That's what she do. I already know that. Jared Goff and Jimmy G. Before the demise of your organization, y'all better get rid of those guys, man. Because at the end of the day, Russell Wilson and Kyler Murray right now are the two best quarterbacks in that division. And we all know, if you don't have the two best, if you're not the best or the second best quarterback in the division, we already know your trajectory in your division. Jared Goff and Jimmy G are the two worst quarterback in the NFC West, bro. Two worst quarterback. And that's why the Rams and the 49ers are the weakest link in the NFC West. Man, sticking in NFC West, man. Before we go on a little quick break, I got a poem. I got a poem I got to talk. I got to talk about my Seattle Seahawks, the home team. You know, and then right after the break, I'm going to talk about why every team in the NFC should be very, very scared of Tom Brady. So real quick, this is my poem, man. This is my poem. I got to give because the Seahawks just won the NFC West. This is the poem from the guru to the Seahawks organization. <clears throat> the O-line protects the building. The defense is cooking. Russ is serving while the running backs do the cleaning. The wideouts collect the checks, but the Seahawks will win the ship. Hey man, I'm a poet, dog. Call me the poet, man. Call me the poet guru. I should stop this sports stuff and just do all poetry, man. This is Monday Morning Football with the Guru. You are listening to Monday Morning Football with the Guru. For more sports content, visit youtube.com slash world of sports network. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey man appreciate you guys as always showing love to 
Monday morning football with the guru, MMF. Y'all know what it is, December 28th, 2020. Merry Christmas and, uh, you know, Happy New Year, man. Next time I talk to you, I think it will be a New Year. No, Yeah, man, it will be 2021. Holy smoke. Man, it's the last show of the year, dog. Oh, man, I am tripping, and I ain't even got my shoelace on tie, man. What is wrong with me, man? But you know what? Hey, Tom Brady is coming, y'all. NFC. Hey, I want to pay in respect, in respect to Debo, who just passed away, man. The Debo who just passed away. In respect to Debo. When I was thinking about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Tom Brady, I'm thinking like, <laughs> NFC, you guys better watch out, man. Because Tom Brady is Debo. Like, when I see the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and I see Tom Brady's like, and I see everybody else on the NFC, man, it's like, you see, like, I, you guys could see the Buccaneers coming, man. You guys could see the Buccaneers coming. You could see, you could see Russell Wilson. You better hide your, per you better hide your, uh, you better hide this. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Aaron Rodgers, you better go hide yourself. You better go hide all your possession. You better go hide all your Super Bowl rings, dog. Because my man Tom Brady is coming to town. My man Tom Brady is coming to the NFC, y'all. Tom Brady is coming to the NFC. And if you have a Super Bowl ring, you better go hide all your Super Bowl rings, dog. Because Debo Brady ain't playing. My man Debo Brady ain't playing, man. He's coming for all your rings. Hey, Russell, you know that ring you got? You know why you, know why you don't got two, Russell? Because Debo Brady got one from you, dog. Debo Brady got that ring from you, Russell. Debo, my man Aaron Rodgers. You know you only got one ring, right? My man Debo, Debo Brady's gonna make sure of that. Hey, my man Drew Brees. You know y'all Super Bowl, we got, you better go hide it. All your NFC Super Bowl champion ring owners. Debo Brady is coming for y'all, man. The greatest playoff quarterback in the history of playoff, man. It's coming to y'all, and he's coming to knock you the F out. Sorry, man, I can't cuss, man. This is the Walmart version. You know what I'm saying? This is the YouTube YouTube version for the kids, so I can't cuss. You know? But Tom Brady finna knock you the F out. Debo Brady is coming for everybody in the NFC, man. Put it, put it like this. Tom Brady, a.k.a. Debo Brady, have had more playoff victory combined than every playoff um, any every NFC playoff quarterback started combined, dog. Tom Brady got more playoff wins. Let me repeat that. My man Tom Brady got more playoff wins than every quarterback combined in the NFC, dog. Debo Brady coming for y'all, man. Tom Brady has won 44 playoff games. Like, are you serious? There's some guys in the in the NFC that's gonna be that's haven't even started 44 games, dog. I'm telling y'all, it was just like Friday, man. You know what I'm saying? I could see this coming, man. Brady's coming on that. He ain't wearing that bike, though. He's not coming on the bike. He's coming on that Buccaneer ship, dog. Oh yo! Tom Brady's coming out Buccaneers ship, man. You all better go hide all your rings, man, because the scariest, scariest playoff quarterback is in the NFC, man. And they call him Debo Brady. Debo Brady is coming to the NFC, and he's trying to take that ring. He coming to take your ring, man. So, Russ, you better watch out. Debo Brady finna try to take that ring. Drew Brees, you better watch out. Debo Brady finna try to take that ring. Debo Brady is in the NFC playoff, and everyone better go run and hide, and you better put up all your jewelry away. <laughs> oh, man. 
Respect to Friday, man. That's one of my favorite movies of all time, man. One of my favorite movies of all time, man. Debo, man. Tiny Tim, man. Debo, Brady. I want to talk about the Bears and the Jags. And it's about just the perfect time for the Bears and the Jags. Like, for the Jacksonville Jaguars, this is the perfect time to be a Jacksonville Jaguars fan. Because the Jags just won the... NFL losing us the losing record, the chance to get a franchise quarterback in uh, um, Trevor Lawrence, a quarterback of the century, a quarterback of a of a generation, whatever whatever adjectives you want to use to describe it, whatever hype word, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't even want to hype it. We all know what Trevor Lawrence is, man. He's a real deal, man. He the real deal, just like Tabasco sauce, man. You know what I'm saying? But my man, this is what this is. I was thinking about this. I was really thinking about this, right? And I was like, you know what? All things said, I think Trevor Lawrence fit Duval County better than he would fit he'll fit Gotham City. No BS, man. You know what I'm saying? Like Trevor Lawrence, like I think Jacksonville is the perfect, perfect place and situation. For Trevor Lawrence to to succeed, honestly, honestly, like y'all, like Google, I'm being honest with y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? Trevor Lawrence is a college, like phenom. Jacksonville is a college town. It's not like Gotham City. No, no, no. It's not Gotham City. You don't got to deal with all that excess. No, no, no. In Jayville, man, they love you, man. You know what I'm saying? Yo, when you're a legend, it's, it's the SEC count, man. You know they have they have the battle of what the, the largest cocktail party in the world. You know what I'm saying? Between Florida and Georgia, it's held in Jacksonville, man. Duval County, it's, just, it's, it's a southern football. It's a football time for college. And my man, ain't nobody was a, a, a more recognizable college football player probably the last five, six years than Trevor Lawrence. Ain't nobody's been more recognizable than Trevor Lawrence. And we all know what Jacksonville need, man. A southern town that loves southern football. Now that's got a guy who in, in, in that southern um, corridor, man. The man plays played for Clemson. That whole southern Bible belt, like, he just fits that whole mold, man. He fits straight up Duval County, then he fit Gotham City better, man. I think this is a good situation for both parties. Because he looks like, he looks like, I, like I said, I don't know this dude personally, but it looked like just, you know, he went to Clemson. You know what I'm saying? He, he's a, he, he, from everything you read, everything you get about it, as far as leadership and what he does for the community over there, you could tell he's a, he's a nice, humble kid. Like, he thrived in a small-time situation. Thrive in a small-time situation, man. Jacksonville is a small town, small market situation. The media is not going to overkill him. They're not going to kill him. No, no. They're going to love him. He's going to go to the groceries in Duval County, go to the grocery stores, and they're going to have people going to pick up his groceries for him, man. Jacksonville is a perfect situation because it's a college market and he's a college legend, man. And if he don't succeed, it don't really matter. He will still bring fans to the, uh, to the stadium. He will forever be a legend in Jacksonville. I think this is the best situation that could happen for both parties, man. This is the best situation that could happen for both parties, man. Because the fans get what they want. They get a familiar foe. You know what I'm saying? This they ain't not getting no Big 12 or no Pac-12 quarterback. No, no, no. They get a familiar foe. They know about Trevor Lawrence. They seen him in the last few years. They seen him through the circuit. They know about Trevor Lawrence. So now in Jacksonville, they got everything about Trevor Lawrence. It's not like Gotham City. There's too much distraction about in Gotham City. They didn't even know about Trevor Lawrence till they know they had the, they were battling for the first overall pick. But I know one thing: you go to Jacksonville, Duval County. Oh, they've been know about Trevor Lawrence. I tell you that. And that's why I think it's the perfect time and it's the right fit. Trevor Lawrence in Duval County than he would have been in Gotham City. All right, y'all. We got to, you know, y'all, we got to talk about the Titans and the Packers. We got to talk about Matt LaFleur, my man Fleur. The Fleur and the Packers, y'all. The Packers beat the Titans, you know. I know I hear all your I hear all your Packers fan. I know you guys are like guru. 
Hey, Guru, what you got to say about us now? Look at us. You call us rotten cheese. You call us spoiled this. You call us all this name. But guess what, Guru? We're finna be the number one overall seed. Yes, look at us. We just smoked the Tennessee Titans, the most physical team. You said everybody's going to run us in the middle. We're going to do that. What happened to us? <laughs> All right, Green Bay Packers fans. I'm going to take a page from your quarterback. R-E-L-A-X. Relax. This was a preseason ball game. This was an exhibition. The Tennessee Titans did not care about this game. This game had no determination as far as in the standings. This was an out-of-conference division, one of them quirky out-of-conference division games that has no bearing, win, lose, or draw. In the overall record of this. Yes. So did the Green Bay Packers look good. In a preseason game against the Tennessee Titans. Yes they did. You know what. When the Titans. When the Colts lost. I'm going to tell you one thing. When the Colts lost. Uh, earlier in the day. And the Titans saw the, the weather outside. And Green Bay was snowing. And there was no reason, rhyme or reason. Win or lose, it would have made no damn difference for the Titans either way. You know what the Titans did? They're like, man, you know what? We're going to treat this as a preseason game. This game meant nothing for the t It meant more for the Green Bay Packers than for the Tennessee Titans, bro. Because for the Green Bay Packers, they, you know they're a front-running team. You know what they are. Let's throw the ball to Devontae Adams. Let's do all that front-running nonsense, man. Man, look, the Titans was just so vanilla. Do you know why they call it vanilla, dog? Because they didn't want to do nothing. It's like, you know what you want? It's like when you go, when I go, like, I just came back from McDonald's. Before I was doing this show, man, I had to get my pre-meal. Yeah, the guru eat my McDonald's. I go to the pre-meal, man. So then I was decided, they asked me, they're like, what do you want to drink on your meal? You know, they ask you that. And I'm like, man, you know, it's so vanilla. I really don't want, I don't know, you just don't. You like I, I, I got me some at home. Like I really don't want nothing to drink. So you know what I chose? I chose the most vanilla thing you could think of, man. I chose a vanilla milkshake, man. Yes, a vanilla milkshake. The Titans had no rhyme or reason to like that. This was a vanilla. Did you all watch this game? What I watched, dude? This was like a preseason. The Titans treated this like a preseason game. They were just trying to work on things. They weren't going to show nothing for to put on film. They weren't going to show nothing. Because they didn't need to show anything against the, they, There was nothing to prove against the Packers. This was just, uh, 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 it just so happened to be a week 16 preseason game. That's what this was, man. You can't take, I don't take nothing from this game. I know your Packers fan. Oh, yeah, you don't say nothing. This game don't mean nothing, man. You learn nothing from this game, bro. As soon as the Colts lost, man, this game was a preseason game, man. Mike Vrabel and those guys, the only thing the Titans was trying to do is make sure they got out of this game alive, man. That's all, man. Make sure nobody significantly got hurt, dog. That's all. And that's exactly how they played, man. It's exactly how they played, man. <laughs> Man, but I know your casual fans might not notice that. Oh, my, look at the score. Green Bay, oh, my God. Green Bay just beat them 40 to 17. It was a blowout. Oh, Green Bay's going to the Super Bowl. Wow. Unbeatable. Come on, dog. Come on, man. We all know. We know what really happened. We knew what really happened. This game meant nothing. The same thing that happened before the game, is the same result that happened after the game. Win, lose, or draw. Is they both in the same situation? Because next week, they both got to win to, uh, to solidify their, their position. So, they both got to win to solidify their position, man. And now, let's talk about, to finish it all up, the home team, the team that's already solidified. 
the team that solidified themselves, man. I keep telling you guys, man, this is why they call me the guru. All right, y'all keep thinking, oh man, the guru is a homer. He always want to talk about the home team. No, no, I don't want to talk about the home team. The home team make me talk about them. Like, they make me talk about them. I mean, whoa, 11 and 4. I was looking at a chance. I was looking at my receipts. You know what I'm saying? I was looking at my receipt because, you know, you know, so when you get the championship rings, you know what I'm saying? When you get a championship rings, you have a certain receipt. I was looking at the Seattle Seahawks receipts from the, from the last um, championship ring, man. You know what I'm saying? There were certain criteria they, 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 on the receipt I saw. You know what I'm saying? I saw on the receipt, Carpenter quarterback, right? Check. Woo! On the receipt. What else did I see? Dynamic defense. Check. Mmm. Outstanding kicking game. Check. What else? Hmm. Great head coach. Check. Hmm. What else? Oh, I want to see. Oh, a running game. Basically, a running back when when the rubber hit the road in the playoff. I'm talking about. I ain't talking about. A, I'm talking about a running game that when it's third and three in the playoff, you could get me through yards. Check. Chris Carson is back. Uh, and you know, one of the most explosive, one of the best, and the last thing you need, explosive players. Check. Once again, I looked at the receipt, looked at the receipt, and it looked like the Seattle Seahawks got everything you need to win a ring. They got everything you need to go to the Super Bowl, bro. They got everything you need, man. The receipt. I just checked the receipts. They already won a ring before. I just checked the receipts. They got a competent quarterback. Check. They got a dynamic defense. They got playmaker Jamal Adams. You know what I'm saying? The D-line. The last four or five weeks, ain't nobody sacked the quarterback more than the Seattle Seahawks, man. They getting sacked. They turning the ball over. Bro, check. What else? Outstanding, outstanding kicking game. Myers, I don't think Myers have missed yet. I haven't seen Jason Myers miss a field goal yet. Outstanding special team. Outstanding kicking game, man. Outstanding coaching. I'm telling you, I've seen this movie before, man. I've definitely seen this play before. I've seen this act before. I've read this book before. Any type of analogy you want to use, man. Use it. One thing I'm telling you, and I've been telling you all this, and I'm going to keep telling you all again. The Seattle Seahawks are going to the Super Bowl. And this has been Monday Morning Football with the Google.